In this video, we're going to be looking at databases within Notion and how we can use them to help us organize our Bible memory system. All right, so this is the Notion page we created last lesson where we created an outline of memorizing Galatians chapter one. But as you can see here, there are some limitations to using outlines in that they take up a lot of space and there is not an easy way to apply dates that is easy, easy to filter by and so on. So instead, right at the end of the last video, we looked at creating a database, first of all, to save space by storing the information horizontally rather than vertically, but also in order to help us to really apply some of the benefits of databases. So let's have a look at databases within Notion and how we can use them. I'm actually going to rename this database books. And we're going to delete this field. So let's delete that field. Sure. And we're going to rename these files. And I'll just call it Galatians. And then we'll call this one Ephesians. All right. So what we've done at this point is we've uh, created a database, very basic database, with two entries in it. And the database is called Books. We're going to create another database now. So slash command, the way we create it, as we saw last video, slash command, and we can type in database. We're going to create another inline one. And this one's going to be called chapters. Okay, so let's just start typing in some chapters, relations, one, relations, two and let's type in Ephesians one. So we've got a chapter for that. Now we're going to add a column here and rather than making it a multi-select, we're actually going to make it a relation. The first thing we have to do with a relation is choose which database we are going to relate to our current database. We're going to search for the one books and let's choose books, create relation. Okay, so we're gonna rename this field. We're gonna call it book. And you'll see that a corresponding field has been added to our books database. And we're going to rename that, call it chapters. All right, so if we click on this uh, empty cell underneath books, the Galatians one, a list of entries in our books table will come up. If we hover over them, this blue plus sign will appear. And we know that Galatians one is a chapter of the book Galatians. So we're going to press that. And straight away, you'll see Galatians 1, the book is Galatians. And likewise, in the book database, we have Galatians 1 as one of the chapters. And we'll go through and do the same for Galatians 2 and then Ephesians 1, adding them to the appropriate books. Okay, so what we've done here is we've created what's called a relational database. So we have two databases, and they're both related. One of them is dedicated to books of the Bible, and one of them is dedicated to chapters of the Bible. And there are some other benefits we can do as well. So if we add another column in here, and we're gonna call this number of verses. And we'll make it a number. What we can actually do is we can keep information about each chapter. So Galatians 1 has 24 verses, uh, and Galatians 2, I believe, has 21, and Ephesians 1, I think, has 24. So let's just say that. We can actually create another field in our books database to summarize that information. So we're going to create a new property and call it a rollup or choose a rollup property. Then we're going to configure this roll up. So click on an empty cell. We're going to choose an existing relation. So choose information from chapters. And we're going to take the number of verses. And you can see by default, it pulls in all of the numbers for each of the related entries. So we've got 24 verses in Galatians 1, 21 in Galatians 2. But rather than showing original, we're actually going to take the sum. And this is going to show us how many verses there are in the book. Now, the benefit of putting this in a database is it means any changes that we make 
from now on are automatically going to be reflected in here. So if we add another uh, entry to our chapters database and call it Galatians 3, and we add this to our Galatians book, and then we add the number of verses. So Galatians 3, I believe, has 29 verses. We'll notice that the verses column for the book automatically updates. And if we were to add more chapters to the book of Ephesians or the book of Galatians, we would see those numbers updating. So that's another benefit of having related databases, is it enables us to do interesting calculations and connections. But the reason why we would use databases like this in Bible memory is so that we can more easily track our progress. You, you'll recall, based on the way we had it set up before, that in order to see how much progress we'd made on a particular book we had to automatically tick when we'd memorized the whole chapter well with databases we can actually set it up so that we only need to tick each passage and when we've ticked each passage in a chapter then the chapter is automatically marked as memorized and when we've memorized each of the chapters the book is automatically marked as memorized and in the next video i'm going to be showing you how we can set up a collection of relational databases so that we can more easily track our progress overall. We'll see you in the next video.